About two months ago, I made my first ever Unity game in five days. It was extremely incomplete, but good for learning the ropes. Since then, I've decided I want to make a fully fledged game good enough to put on Steam. Seems like quite the jump, but A, I've been making games since 2009 just on outdated and limited software, and B, why not? So this is my first more or less month of development. The game I'm making is an extension of my five day project, but I want puzzle solving to be a big part of it, so I guess a puzzle platformer. I'm also starting from scratch so I can have a clean file and get more used to Unity and C Sharp. First order of business was designing a character. I played with different shapes and appendages, but ended up using pretty much the same design as before. Simple looks good, and I'm gonna have to make who knows how many animations for this character. So I made idle, run, and jump animations. In Unity, I set up all the basic movement and collisions, and I solved the wall sticking issue from last time by using a slip material. You do get stuck on the edge of the platforms though. I managed to kind of fix it, but then this can happen. That can be a problem for if slash when I put in floating platforms. After getting slopes to work, and realizing the platforms were okay if they were super chunky, I moved on to the camera. I had a decent grasp on how it works from last time, but still looked up tutorials. So it works pretty well here, and you can see the parallax effect. But there were improvements to be made. I put in a space background as a placeholder, then had a bounding area for the camera so it stops moving when you get to the edge of the level. I also had the camera look forward in the direction you're facing. It needs some smoothing out and more look ahead when you're running, which I did later on. Now for some background art. I decided to make the mid-ground elements outlined vector drawings to match the player. We're starting with a forest level, which is going to have these grassy dirt blocks. They're like long tiles. For the background and foreground, I considered the same style, but went with painting and Photoshop. It helped separate them from the mid-ground, and I like the loose workflow and painterly style. So I made a couple of different tree trunks and sets of leaves, along with a bush and some hills. I also made a few differently tinted versions for different layers of depth. Then I scattered all these elements, creating an environment, with several layers of parallax. I played around with a bloom effect, and this is what we have so far. Next I animated an enemy walk cycle, just a pinkish blob with legs and spikes. Then a simple hurt and death animation for our main character. After implementing an enemy movement script, health and death systems, it was starting to look like a game. I also made a knockback so you don't just walk through the enemy, except when you're invincible after getting hurt. Then I smoothened out the enemy animation and made the hurt animation a flip. I also made the health bar little symbols of his face and expanded upon the level design. For another type of enemy, I made this little creature that spits fire. But the fire's purple because I wanted it to look more mythical. It opens and closes its mouth to turn the fire on and off. So I coded the switch with adjustable timing and damage. And there are two colliders. One on the creature, and another on the fire that turns on and off with it. You'll take damage if you hit either one. Next I started trying to get a player attack to work. I was testing it out with just a single kick frame. Then I made an actual animation which was a backflip with some speed line effects. And I had a hurt animation for the enemy. After a lot of back and forth, I had an attack system with a cooldown so you can't spam it, and you can't attack these spiked enemies from above. I may have different types that you can attack from all sides or only certain areas. The fire breathers you can't attack at all. And as of now, attacking doesn't do anything except stun them. Okay, so this is me drawing the first room of the game. I think this is a good time to explain what the general structure of the game is. You start off in this room with four portals to different levels. It's like Crash Bandicoot or Spyro in that sense. In each level you'll collect a piece of the puzzle that gives you some sort of code to crack. Then you can unlock the door to the next room. I'm not sure how many rooms there'll be or if the number of levels will vary, but that's the idea. This first one's kind of cave themed. A lot of dirt and rocks. I plan on adding some stuff around each portal that's related to the level theme, but that might be overkill depending on how many levels there are. These empty holes at the top are going to be filled by the stones you collect in each level. And as I said, they'll have clues for a code you can enter to get through the door. For now, I'm thinking you can do the levels in each room in any order. 
So this is not finished, but I moved on to animating a portal and setting up scene management. I'm going to animate these properly, but this gets the idea across. When you stand in front of a portal and press enter, it takes you to that level. Maybe I'll change which key does it. I've changed a few things up here just so we can tell we're in level 2 and not level 1. Now let me actually draw some sprites for level 2. This level is going to be very rock based. I made this long tile in a similar fashion to the first one. A lot of rocks clump together forming a sort of wall. I put a gradient over top which makes it look nicer and less noisy. After finishing that and the corner tile, I went into Photoshop for the background pieces. I painted a morning sky for this one. Still don't know if there's a difference between sunrise and sunset, but early morning is what I'm going for. I made a few rocky mountains or hills that are going to be at different layers of distance. Then a few actual rocks that I can put in the closer background or even the foreground. I also drew some dead trees which fit more with the landscape than live ones. With all of that I started placing the elements into the scene and we have the building blocks of level 2. Then I drew this big rock that acts as a barrier at the start of the level. So the enemies are the same across both levels so far. I'm sure that'll change, but it definitely won't be a unique set of enemies for every level. There are some interesting challenges to be had just from different arrangements of these two. Now for these collectible stones. I drew a 1 and 2 on them as placeholders, but even if I knew what to put on them I wouldn't spoil it. I attempted to code the unlocking of the stone in the main room when you pick it up in the level, but getting the code to carry over between scenes was more complicated than I thought. I had an empty object that can carry the scripts between scenes. But the object is in every scene so you need to destroy it to get rid of duplicates. But then the reference script for the stone unlock is missing. I watched a bunch of videos but I couldn't really get anything to work. I still need to figure it out. And this is what I have for the game so far. There's not a lot going on but I've covered most of the fundamentals. Of course one huge thing that's missing is there are no puzzles. Which are supposed to be half the game. Those are next on the agenda once I fix everything, like not being able to unlock stones. I can pick it up, but it won't do anything. Now here's level 2. It's far less complete than level 1, but they both have a long way to go. Um, it'll be easier now that things are set up though. This is me genuinely trying not to lose any health by the way. Also I put a little change in elevation for this one. But no sloping surfaces yet, even though I did get them working little floating rock there. Anyway, that's basically it. I said it was a month, but it's hard to say how much time I've spent on this. I'm uploading a video every week, and this is the first one about this game, so it's hard to balance. Maybe I'll do an update video every few weeks or a month. If you're curious about when this will be finished, well, I was hoping by the end of the year, but these things always take longer than expected. Probably early to mid-2026. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time, and goodbye.